Hi, this is Sasha from theautismhelper.com, and this is a very brief, basic tutorial on how to use Google Forms. So I have some other more in-depth tutorials on Google Forms, but this is kind of just the basics to introduce, to introduce exactly what Google Forms is and a little bit of like the setup process. So Google Forms is a tool that's part of Google Drive. If you have a Gmail, you have access to it. You can use this anywhere on any device as long as you have the link. So it makes the whole process very easy. So to set up your form, you only have to do this once. You'll want, want to add a new form. So you click on New and then Google Form. So you only have to set up the actual form once. Once it's all set up, everyone adds their responses. You can copy the link, send it out to people, bookmark it on your classroom computer, whatever you want. So the setup process is quick, but it really only you have to do it once. So it's pretty great. So um, I'm going to set up some IEP goal data for a student named Rachel. So I'm going to put Rachel's IEP data is the title of the form. Um, and here is where this will automatically update in a minute, the title of the form, there we go. And then you can add in all of your questions. So Google Forms is basically a survey. People can submit answers to different questions. The questions here are going to be the academic IEP goals. And then it will help you analyze and view and process the responses. So here it will be the data. So this is really a tool for analyzing the data you take. Um, when I post about this in the past, people are like, oh, but I love paper and pencil the best. I agree. I still take data on paper and pencil, but then input it onto the Google form so you can best view the goal, the data. If you have paraprofessionals taking data and you taking data, you can see everything in one spot. So here's Rachel's IEP data I'm going to put for the 2018-2019 school year. So give a little bit of information. Um, you can add the picture of the student if you want, make it all personalized. So there's the first question. So there's the first note, and now we're going to add the questions. So here, everything kind of, if you hover over it, will pop up what you want it to be. You can make this as simple or as complicated as you want. I like to keep it pretty straightforward. So I'm going to add my first question. And the first question I'm going to put here is the date, because we're going to want to know what day the data was taken. So date. And then the format right here, month, day, year is already, uh, is already in. And I'm going to make this one required because I'm going to want to know every single day, you know, what data goes from with which, with which results. So the first one here is the date. So then I'm going to add the next question. And so this option of required or not required is nice for something like IEP goals because you might not work on every single IEP goal every day. So you don't have to answer each question. You could just answer the ones that are applicable. So let's say I'm going to put my language arts goal. So my language arts goal is answers WH questions. And some other information I'm going to put is maybe the mastery criteria. So I'm going to put 10 trials. I want here. So now I have some different options of types of answers that I can give. So you can give multiple choices, check boxes. Here I'm going to do a linear scale between 1 through 10 because I have 10 trials. So I want to know how many she got correct. So I can just put how many we got in each one. That's the language arts. Um, math, the goal here, let's say, is identifies numbers. 1 through 10. So now I can pick another option and I'm going to pick, let's see, we have to, let's see we have to do 10 trials of this again. So I'm going to do that linear scale one more time through 10. It's a little confusing because 1 through 10 and 10 trials, but whatever, we'll work on that. All right, so next is her science goal. And her science goal is identifying body parts. And the body parts that we're working on, I'm gonna, I want to know specifically which ones she gets correct. So the body parts we're working on are neck, head, um, arms, legs, and let's say feet. So we're working on five body parts. I want to know each day which ones she gets correct. You can check, check, check which correct. And then our social studies goal is identifies, or this will be um, follows directions in the community. And I'm going to do a multiple choice here. 
So this is, she needed zero props. Then she needed one to two prompts. And here she needed three or more prompts. So I can track the prompting level right here. And her communication goal, so I'm gonna do social emotional goal is, let's say, I didn't prep these guys, think of these on the spot. She will greet peers. So options are independently greets two or more peers a day, independently greets one peer, does not independently greet any peers. So I want to know the criteria here we're working on is how many peers she's doing. All right, so those are my basic goals. I had a language arts, a math, a science, social studies, social emotional with different types of answers. So we're all done. So that's it. You don't have to click save. It's always kind of worries me. You're like, oh shoot, what do I do? That's it. You're finished. So now you send this. So you can email it to yourself or you can just keep the link right here. Um, you can embed this if you have like a school website or something like that that you all use. Click shorten URL. This one's pretty long. So I like to click the shorten URL and then keep this link. So I'm going to go into a new tab to show you how the responses look. Okay, so we set up all Rachel's data. The school year starts, it's Friday. I have data that I've taken paper and pencil throughout the week and now I want to, Friday afternoon, I really wanna get home but I wanna put this data in. So what am I gonna do? So I go to her response page. So this is that link that I just opened and we're gonna submit her data from the week. I'm just gonna do a few days here to show you. So let's say this was last week. So I have Monday's data. Her um, WH questions, she did really good on Monday. She got nine out of 10. Um, her math, she struggled. She only got five out of 10. For working on science, she got all correct except her arms. Social studies, we didn't work on that, that day. Um, social emotional, she independently greeted one peer. Submit. Cool. Um, now I'm gonna do Tuesday's data. So fill in the date. This was from last Tuesday. She did awesome on her WH questions, a little better on her math. She got all of those science body parts. We did work on the so social studies, but she needed three or more prompts. She independently greeted two or more peers. Submit. So that was just submitting two days of data. That took me, what, 20 seconds, right? So now this is automatically here. See, I have two days of data in my responses. This is going to summarize <coughs> everything in a way that's just really easy to see. So language arts, okay, she got half the time she got nine, then the other half of the time she got 10. Same thing with math. We don't have a lot of responses yet, but once you get more responses, when you have like 10 or more days that you've inputted data, there's a ton of variation. So you can really see where the trend is. Um, identifies body parts, see which ones she's struggling with. Social studies, obviously we only did this one time, so I know that this is how it was. And then um, social emotional. So you can see like as we get more data points, we're gonna get more information. I'll show you all the days that you took data. So just really simple. So this is a pretty, like I said, straightforward basics on Google Forms. I have some other ones that get more in depth in graphing data, utilizing data, other ways to use this. Hope you found this helpful. This is Sasha from theautismhelper.com.